Hello everybody, Maven here, and today I'm going to share some vital information on stats. How they work, how much you should invest into a certain stat, it's a lot more in-depth than you think it is. Whether you are a new player or a veteran player, a lot of people may think the more I invest into a stat, the better, right? Like for example, if I'm going to do a super build, I should probably go with 100 intellect, correct? Not exactly. There are a lot of factors that go into this, so there's a few things we need to talk about today. Penalties, diminishing returns, and sweet spots. And that brings us to one of the most useful tools in Destiny history, d2armorpicker.com. That's where we're going to get a lot of information for today's video. Now don't worry, this is not an ad read, this is not a sponsor, this is literally where we're going to be filming today's video because it's such a useful site. Now I'm quickly going to break down how this website works. If you already know how it works, then you can go ahead and skip to this timestamp here. Now when you get to d2armorpicker.com, you can link your Bungie account, it'll pull directly from the API and DIM, so it'll make builds out of what you have in the vault. So let's do a little example here. You can click the classes in the top here, Warlock, Titan, Hunter, to choose which you want to build on. So let's do a little example here of creating a build. So say I want to do Titan. And now you can choose which exotic armor piece you would like to build with. So let's say I want to make a Lorely Splendor build. Now let's go ahead and scroll down here to the uh, fragments because fragments do dictate your stats. I'm going to click over here on Solar and say I wanted Ember of Empyrean, Ember of torches and ember of searing right so those are the fragments that i want now let's go back up here and now we can actually select our stats so let's start with 100 resilience because you know that's what i want as a titan now as you see the 100 on mobility grayed out because it's pulling items directly from my vault here so when i have 100 resilience it knows that there's no possible way out of all the armor that i have that i can also hit 100 mobility so next we're going to go with 100 Discipline, that is what I want. A lot more stuff gets grayed out because it's not possible with the armor that I got. So then we're going to go to Tier 7 Intellect, that is what I want. And then we're going to go Tier 3 Strength, followed by Tier 4 Recovery, and then Tier 3 Mobility. So now it has narrowed down all the possible builds on the right side of the screen here. And now we have this exact build that I created with the Tier 3 Mobility, Tier 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline, 7 Intellect, and 3 Strength. So this is the build that I just created out of the armor that I got. So now we're going to click on it to expand it. And then we are going to copy DIM query to clipboard. Let's click that there. And then you can go on over to DIM. Now when you go to DIM, you can just go into the search bar on the top here. And then you can control V to paste the thing that you copied from D2 Armor Picker. This is what you copied to your clipboard. Now when you scroll down, it will highlight all of the items that I need to create this perfect build that I just created in seconds. It is a very, very useful tool. I've been using it for years and it has saved me so much time and helped me create so many good builds. Now let's finally break down the stats. We're still here on D2 Armor Picker and we're zoomed in on the statistics section. And when you hover your mouse over all of these numbers, you can see the cooldowns of all the possible abilities. We're on Warlock right now, so you can see all the Warlock abilities. Uh, whatever you hover your mouse over, you can see the cooldowns for each tier that you invest into a statistic. But also keep in mind, huge disclaimer, that some of the ability cooldowns listed on D2 Armor Picker are a little bit outdated but the tiers are still the same, so this is not misinformation. Now this part's more for the newer players, but if you hover over any ability, be it discipline, intellect, or strength, you can see that each ability named here has a different tier on the left side there. So for example, a very commonly used grenade, which is a very high tier grenade, is the Vortex, which is in tier two, and it has a slower base cooldown than something like a tier eight grenade, like the Firebolt grenade, for example, and this is reflected in game. You can see here the Firebolt grenade has a pretty quick base cooldown, and when you hover over the Vortex grenade, it has a much slower base cooldown. And now this brings us to the first thing we have to talk about today, penalties. Now you can see that every single super ability, every melee ability, and every grenade ability have a base cooldown. You can see it labeled right there. So for example, my vortex grenade has a 232 base cooldown. In order for me to actually have that 232 base cooldown, let's go ahead and lower my uh, discipline here down to tier three. And you can see I have a 232 base cooldown. 
tier three is the bare minimum for these base cooldowns. Because if you dip below tier three, you actually get a penalty to your base cooldown. And again, as you can see, my super has an 820 base cooldown. I just happen to have tier three intellect and my base cooldown, what do you know, 820. If I dip any below that, I get a huge deficit, a big penalty. So across the board for every stat, tier three is going to be your bare minimum for your base cooldown. However, there are a few stats where it's actually okay to dip below the minimum. And that is going to be strength, discipline, recovery, and resilience. But now do not worry about mobility. You never have to invest in mobility unless you're a hunter. So for resilience specifically, we're looking at the PVE damage reduction values. As you can see at tier three, you have 3% PVE damage reduction, you dip below that, 2%. You're only losing 1%. Like literally, resilience is the one stat where if you're playing PvE, you want to have 100 whenever you can. That's where you get the most bang for your buck is 100 in resilience. But you know, down at the lower tiers, it really doesn't matter how much resilience you have. You're either gonna invest in it or you're not. That's how resilience works. Now for recovery, this is for PVP specifically. We're looking at the base regeneration time because that's very important for Crucible. Now, as you can see from tier zero through tier six, we see a plus 0.2% increase in regeneration time per tier. So the drop between tier three and two is non-existent. The only time you start to see an increase is at tier seven, where each subsequent tier is gonna give you plus 0.4 seconds of regeneration time. So tier seven through 10 is great. If you're gonna do Crucible, I would recommend 100 recovery at all times, if you can. But if you weren't going to invest into recovery for Crucible, then literally it doesn't matter what tier you go to. Now for discipline and strength, it is pretty much the same thing. If we look at tier three here, let's see the highest tier, flux grenades, 302. Dipping to tier two, we get 309. It's only a seven second difference, which is not much. Taking a look at strength at tier three, 153 for that penumbral blast cooldown. Moving on to tier two, we only lose six seconds. However, let's go back up to discipline here. So at tier two, 309 cooldown. And then when we drop down to tier one, 327 we lose a lot of cooldown on that so tier two is actually going to be your low end sweet spot for discipline and strength because you know you can dip just barely below that bare minimum and you're not losing too much so if you're going to do a build where you didn't care about discipline or strength in the slightest at least invest two into that stat that is going to make it so you don't get too harsh of a penalty and you have an okay cooldown. Now let's talk about diminishing returns. When you hover over any ability, you can see that the more and more that you invest into a stat, the amount of cooldown you get granted for each tier will lessen more and more as you approach 100. This is called diminishing returns. However, there is a magic number that we need to talk about, and that is gonna be tier eight. Tier eight is where diminishing returns actually goes away because the jump from tier eight to tier 10 in any ability is massive. So if you're going to do a build focused around a specific stat, going 100 is not a bad idea. Now, let me give you an example of diminishing returns. Remember, tier eight's our magic number. So let's use recovery, for example. This is our rift cooldown on Warlock. Like I said, tier three is the base minimum at a minute and 22 seconds. When we invest one more into the stats tier four, we're down to one minute and 14 seconds, which we're granted a plus eight seconds to our cooldown. Now we move on to tier five. Go down to 107 seconds, that is an extra seven seconds of cooldown. Moving on to tier six, an extra four seconds of cooldown. So as you can see, the more we invest into a stat, the more our cooldown diminishes for each subsequent stat. Tier seven's another four seconds. Now moving on to tier eight, you would expect it would diminish further and we'd only get bonus three seconds of cooldown, right? But wrong, eight is the magic number. So 59 seconds down, to 51 seconds, a bonus eight seconds of cooldown when you would have expected it to be three. And then moving on to 90 is a plus five seconds and then 100 is a plus five seconds. So if you're really trying to do a build focused on a specific stat, investing 100 is totally fine. But if you wanted to invest a lot in multiple stats, tier eight, is always going to be your magic number for any stat. However, there are a couple stats that defy this logic. The first one is going to be intellect. Now you never want to invest past tier seven of intellect. Even if you're doing a super based build, don't go hundred. You always want to stop at seven because the diminishing returns mechanic actually continues on intellect. It doesn't actually reverse itself at tier eight. Like all the other ones do for intellect. It actually continues through to 100. 
So tier seven is the sweet spot that you wanna stop at. Any points you invest after that is points wasted. Now the other stat that defies the diminishing return logic is going to be resilience. Now for the barricade cooldown, it's actually no difference, but we're looking at the PVE damage reduction. And like I said before, some of the cooldowns are not updated from before a few seasons ago. So as you can see, PVE damage reduction is at 40% here when it should be 30. So you may just have to do some adaptations of your own in game, but the information more or less is accurate still based on these tiers. But as you can see for the PVE damage reduction, the diminishing returns is actually the opposite. It diminishes in the opposite direction. So the more you invest into resilience, your stats, the amount of PVE damage reduction you get actually rises and rises the further you get to 100. So when you're playing PVE, I mean, resilience is already the most important stat, but you should always have 100 resilience in PVE because you just get so much more out of it for going 100 as opposed to anything less. Uh, tier 8 actually does hit a sweet spot. So if you really cannot hit 100 resilience, you should at least have tier 8, but have 100 if possible at all times. And finally, let's talk about what you all came here for, sweet spots. How much do you wanna actually invest into each stat to get the most out of your build to help you min-max? Now, like we already talked about, tier eight across the board is a pretty good sweet spot, except intellect, because that stops at seven. But tier eight is always where you get the most bang for your buck at the high end. So you can invest 100 in everything but intellect if you want to, but if you really needed to invest in other stats and you couldn't quite hit 100 in a certain stat, then tier eight is perfectly fine. However, However, there's one certain ability in the game that's kind of an anomaly to this uh, information and that is going to be marksman's dodge on hunter which for some reason the sweet spot where you get the most cooldown for a certain tier is going to be tier four and subsequently every single tier is going to grant you plus two seconds towards your cooldown so investing anywhere between tier four and 100 is perfectly fine for marksman's dodge now let's talk about low end sweet spots this is where you actually want to use a certain ability but you cannot invest too much into it and you don't want to get too big of a penalty so these are going to be the stats on the lower end of the spectrum where you get the most cooldown for investing in them before starting to hit diminishing returns now i made this chart here going over every kind of ability in the game letting you know their minimum you want to invest if you don't want to invest at all and then their low end sweet spot high end sweet spot and whether or not it is worth going 100 in them now there are a few different things i got to point out here you can see two different types of grenades there are high tier grenades the ones with a slower base cooldown and then there is the low tier grenades the ones with the quicker cooldown and you want to invest differently depending on which kind of grenade you're running now for some class abilities you may see a low end sweet spot of four slash five they're all the same tier they all have the same values um, but four to five is a good number for either of those on the low end because they get a decent amount of cooldown for each of those tiers after that is when you start to see diminishes now if we're talking about recovery for the health regen in crucible then i'd highly recommend 100 because at the lower tiers you basically get nothing it's like either you're gonna invest 100 or don't invest at all at the lower tiers you get like 0.2 second cooldown for each tier you invest where you start to see an increase is actually tier 7 where each tier is actually going to give you plus 0.4 second cooldown which is double so realistically anywhere from tier 7 to 10 is fine but i'd highly recommend 10 if you can for crucible and resilience is kind of the same way where it's like if you're doing pve you always want to have 100 resilience and if you don't have that then you pretty much don't want to invest at all it's like not even worth it uh realistically though you can go anywhere from tier 8 to 10 but just the jump to 100 is so high that running 100 is worth it. Now, if we're talking about resilience investment for Crucible, that's a whole different topic for a whole different video, but I'll just break it down quick here. I personally run two resilience and I don't play Titan. Uh, running two resilience allows you to survive two to the head and one to the body from a 140 RPM hand cannon, which is very common. Uh, when you run tier four resilience, you can live two headshots from a 390 RPM pulse rifle which isn't as common, that's why I only invest tier two. But if you are a Titan, obviously you can run 100 resilience for your barricade cooldown, but honestly, like I said before, eight's the magic number. You get the most out of your cooldown, the most out of your statistic points, so you can invest in other stats by investing eight. Don't let anybody clown on you or judge you for running tier eight resilience as a Titan. It's perfectly fine. So that is gonna do it for the stat breakdown. Now, like I said, uh, some of the cooldowns on each armor picker are a little outdated, so you may need to adjust very slightly in-game, if not at all, because, you know, 
The numbers change a bit, but the tiers are still accurate. So hopefully this information today helps you get the most out of your builds. Like you might've thought you had to invest a hundred into a stat, like your OCD really wanted to see that number hit a hundred, but you really don't need to. Just hit one of the sweet spots on that chart. You know, if you don't want to invest too much, but you don't want to have a bad cooldown, go with the low end sweet spot. If you want to invest a lot, but you still want to invest in other stats, hit the high end sweet spot, it's perfectly fine. Your stats don't have to be at 100 every time. For some of the stats, you can hit 100 and it's great. For some of the stats, you actually don't want to hit 100 depending on what the situation is. So anyways, that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment because interacting with the video in different types of ways like that really helps it out and helps the algorithm. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. And I'd appreciate if you share this video with a friend. I'm sure they find it useful. And I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.